an exercise, Unit 1, 1.1. Hi guys, and welcome to my new series of GCSE revision videos for the biology topic. Now, this will be a AQA uh, example that we're going to be looking at, and it's going to cover all of the three units in biology, so unit B1, B2, and B3. Now, whether you do higher foundation, it doesn't matter, because all the information here is relevant to whichever sort of test you're going to be doing. And the same goes for any other examples, really. Any, knowing any other information is always key, and it's always great to know it in case you come up with the exam and you think, hey, I've heard something about that. I can use knowledge that I've you know, learned elsewhere and apply it to my own. So we're going to start off looking at diet and exercise, the first part of the first topic of keeping healthy. Now, the learning objectives for today are to know what a healthy diet consists of, to understand why some people can eat lots without getting fat, and to know how an athlete's diet differs from your own. Now, what makes a healthy diet? A healthy diet is just another way of saying what a balanced diet is. Remember this, as some students sometimes confuse the two of them. Some may believe that a healthy diet is always eating you know, lots of fruit and lots of veg and having no fatty products whatsoever. This isn't true. A healthy diet is just a synonym for a balanced diet. And the correct definition for a balanced diet is a diet containing the correct amounts of fiber, water, minerals, fats, vitamins, proteins, and carbohydrates. These seven food groups are known as the seven main food groups, and this may come up in your exam. Now, this pie chart shows what we really should be eating every day. Of course, you don't have to eat each one of these products shown, but it's just a general gist of how much, what percentage of what group of food you should have. Now, remember, these aren't the seven main food groups, but the seven main food groups fall within these. Perhaps as an extension exercise, you could go and try and find out which of the seven food groups go into each of these categories. Now, we can see that one of the categories is the fruit and vegetable category, and they make up about 35% of all the food we should eat in one day. The same goes for the carbohydrates, we should have about 35% as well, and a 15% each slot for dairy and meat products. Now the seven food groups. As I've already stated, they consist of fiber, water, minerals, fats, vitamins, proteins, and carbohydrates. Now, I've, as you can see, I've put up a sort of acronym here, which is FWMFVPR, which stands for Foods Will Mainly Force Very Professional Cutlery. Now, this is something to help you in the exam. If you can't remember them all, try and remember them in this order, and they should help you out. Seeing as it's a food-related anagram, you can really see which ones you really need. Right. Now, the effects of each food group. Your body uses carbohydrates, proteins, and fats to release the energy you need to live and to build new cells with. You need small amounts of vitamins and minerals for your body to work healthily. Without them, you will suffer deficiency diseases. If you don't have a balanced diet, then you'll end up malnourished. I'd uh, give you the concession that you should go on making notes as I go on these. In my all of my videos, you'll see I've made some key points, as you can see here, and it'd be wise to write them down so you know you can just consolidate your memory, going over them whenever you have time, whether it be you know one day at break time, on the way to school, before you get to bed, but whatever. It's a good idea to do. So if you can, pause the video, grab a pen and pencil, pen and pencil, paper and pencil, and write them all down. The consequences of an unbalanced diet. Fortunately, in countries in the UK, like the UK, or MEDCs, most of us have all the minerals and vitamins we need in the food we eat, seeing as we're part of a first world, first world country. However, our diet can be easily unbalanced in terms of the amount of energy we take in. If we take in too much, we gain weight. However, if we take in too little, we lose weight. Now, it isn't always easy to get the right amounts of balance of the food that you need. Even if you eat a lot, you can still lack vitamins and minerals if you don't eat the right food. Now, how much energy do you need? The amount of energy that you need depends on a lot of different things. Some of these things can change you and some of them can't. So some of them can be external factors and some of them internal factors. 
the external being environmental and internal being inherited, seeing as you can't prevent them. So an example would be that a male uses more energy than a female on average, seeing as they're doing more work and they need, therefore, more chemical energy. Although, if a female is pregnant, they may be using more energy. So remember, this is just an example, but think about it. If a, if a pregnant female uses more energy than a male, there may be other cases. For example, a 30-year-old male may use more energy, may need more energy than an 80-year-old woman because he's doing more work. Now, the amount of work you do is normally directly proportional to the amount of energy you need. Therefore, as shown in the example, the male uses more energy than the female. The amount of energy needed. Now, the food supplies your energy with muscles as they work. So the amount of exercise you do affects the amount of energy you need. If you do very little exercise, then you don't take in as much food. The more exercise you do, the more food you need to take in. Now, any form of exercise will count, even sitting still. This is your body is always breathing, always respiring, and is always on the go. Whether it be sleeping, moving around, on a jog, playing football, it doesn't matter. Now, keeping your body temperature as well will use energy. For this, this is why people in cold climates need to eat more, and they need to regulate their body temperature. Whereas people in hot climates will still need to eat a lot, but not as much, as they don't need to regulate their uh, body temperature to their you know, freezing temperatures around them. Now the metabolic rate. The metabolic rate, the correct definition, is the rate of the chemical reactions that take place in your cells. This varies from person to person depending on their age, size, gender and environmental factors. For example, someone, a athlete, may have a greater metabolic rate as there's a great more deal of muscle tissue, so they eat, need to eat a lot more food to supply the energy they need. Therefore, the chemical reactions in their cells take place faster as they're using more energy. This may be opposed, as opposed to a obese man who doesn't do much exercise at all, so the chemical reactions in his cells will be slower, causing him to not burn off as much energy as much of the food he's taken in. Now, the proportion of muscle to fat affects your metabolic rate. As I've just stated, the obese man uses less as the professional athlete. Your metabolic rate can be changed by the amount of exercise you do. So, the more exercise you do may affect your metabolic rate, seeing as you'll be losing more fat by exercising more, building up more muscle tissue. Therefore, the chemical reactions in your cells will be they will increase the speed that is, and they'll be going faster and faster. Now, here we are at the end. I've left a glossary so you can take down any key points that you may need to write down. I've left with malnourished, metabolic rate, and a balanced diet. So you may come up with these in the exam. So if you were to memorize these or get the gist of them generally, you'll be able to do really well and know exactly what you're writing about when it comes to the exam. So pause the video, write them down if you like, and we'll move on to the next slide whenever you're ready. Okay. We'll finish off with some questions so you can consolidate the, all the information you've taken in with this session. So pause the video, answer these on a separate piece of paper, in a workbook, or in your own biology book, and then play whenever you want the answers. Here are the answers. So pause, correct them, see if you've got them right, and if you have got four out of four, that's great. If not, I'd say rewind the video, try and find the areas which you haven't done so well in, and then have a go at answering the question again. Right, thank you for listening, and this is the end of the session. Next topic, we'll be looking at weight problems in the next uh, part of this unit. And, yeah, until then, see you then.